Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from Blue Sky, San Diego. And today I'm joined by Siri Ibrahim, who is in, I think, Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. Hi, John. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. So how's, uh, how's Chicago today? Uh, it's really nice. Uh, actually, believe it or not, um, I haven't been outside yet. I've been swamped at home where I work from my home office and I haven't had a chance to go outside yet. So it lo- just based on the way it looks outside, it looks really nice. <laughs> well, hopefully the, it'll stay nice for the weekend. So yeah. sorry, uh, founded financial asset protection after learning about the infinite banking concept, also known as the bank on yourself concept. He saw this as an opportunity to save retirement accounts, real estate properties and businesses from market failures mm-hmm. and other risks. And you believe that the number one rule to your money is to make sure it lives somewhere safe and accessible. So just a baseline this, sorry, for us. I mean, infinite banking or bank on yourself. What, what does that mean? Yeah, definitely. It's a concept um, and it's the utilization of whole life insurance. So just to kind of get right into it, um, it's, it's the utilization of whole life insurance, uh, also known as uh, like a cash value whole life insurance policy, and then utilizing the cash value in the policy to become your own source of financing, uh, to save for retirement, to have cash reserves. So new, different functions, different benefits, but the underlying asset is uh, dividend paying whole life insurance and bank on yourself and infinite banking are pretty much using that to become your own so- source of financing. That's what it is in, in, in basic terms. Oh, very good. So, so with that uh, whole life insurance and the dividends is what pay, is what's paying you. Yeah. So th- with, with kind of back up a little bit, there's for the most part, two types, two major types of life insurance, there's term life insurance or temporary yeah. life insurance, and then there's whole life or uh, like cash value life insurance. Um, term has a set period of time is a start date end date. There's no, there's no equity or cash value in it. It's just, for, it's just for, uh, it's just for life insurance only. Whole life insurance, on the other hand, has two aspects or two, two parts to it. One is cash value, and the second is life insurance. The, it has like a, a small savings account inside of the life insurance policy. And over time, this cash value part, part of the savings account grows. It earns dividends, like you said, and it also earns compound interest. Okay. Um, the, what happens, though, is we start to come across leverage now, like especially a lot of, you know, I think, I think a lot of your audience are business owners, right? Yep. Uh, a lot of business owners too, they, they have similar problems as, as far as liquidity. Like they always need more cash. Um, and even when they're making a lot more, and then the, so when they need the more cash and they, they come across and now it comes across a new issue is how do you save your money? So when you utilize the infinite banking concept that addresses both of those needs, the, the first need of leverage, you always have the ability to borrow against the money. There's no underwriting involved with, with, with the loans. You always have the ability to borrow against it. And the other advantage too, is that you borrow against it. So it's always growing. So you're saving your money and using it at the same time. And it's interesting. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, obviously liquidity is always an issue for, for businesses of all sizes, but particularly for small businesses, small mid-sized businesses. So mm-hmm. having, having ready access to liquidity when you need it is critical. And to be honest, um, today, a lot of that is, I mean, people think, oh, interest rates are so low, it's easy to get money, but it's the reality. It isn't when you're going looking for money to support your business and stuff mm-hmm. at times, it can actually be quite prohibitive. You're 100% right. Yeah. Low interest environment, I think pertaining to um, mortgages and homes, but for businesses, it's really difficult to get financing for businesses, um, especially without hard collateral, just straight business loans are very difficult to get. Um, the, the application process is extensive. And about, I think, I forgot the, what the stats are. It's like 86 to 90% of bank loan applications are denied. Oh, mm-hmm. less than, you know, about 10% are actually approved and actually funded. Uh, the vast majority of them are denied. So you need to figure out a way that you could, like a way that you could always get approved for financing. And then uh, infinite banking obviously helps with that. Yeah, no, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very good point because yeah, it, uh, the processes are, are rigorous in many ways mm-hmm. and, and not easy. And, and let's face it, when you're, when you're running a business uh, and you're trying to make payroll or whatever it is, you don't really have time to spend a lot of time like going through application processes mm-hmm. and getting turned. And then if you get turned down, where do you go from there? So then you go to an even higher interest mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. loan or whatever. So yeah, it it uh, it um, it kind of com- it kind of compounds on itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So, um, so when you are when you are going out and when you are talking to people about this, you know, is this something that you think a lot of people already know about, or is this a, a fairly, you know, not a fairly unknown concept to the majority of people? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Um, I think so far from what I've seen from clients and prospects that I'm talking to, about fifty percent of them heard about this they heard about it in the past they read some book about it they watched some podcasts about it they briefly know about it and then through the content we offer we, we help them kind of get there to have a better understanding of it and the other 50 percent had no idea what this was and again the content helped kind of get them in the right direction so i think about half of people we talked to have briefly heard about it they've they've kind of heard you know there's this thing where you can use whole life insurance to invest in real estate or within your business um very few people actually are, are aware of it. And I think to kind of elaborate more, I think the reason why a lot of people don't know about this concept is because think about it when it comes to um, who's in control of like um, marketing investments and financial services. It's usually the media, it's usually large banks, large financial institutions, and they're, all, they're usually pushing mutual funds, brokerage accounts. When you go to your local bank, you know, you have your checking account, savings account, and then if you, and then they obviously see how much money you have. So if the banker sees that you have extra money, you're doing really well. Hey, Mr. Client, Mrs. Client, have you thought about a mutual fund? Have you thought about a 401k? Have you thought about an IRA? So I think when it comes to financial services and traditional financial planning, it's mostly around the stock market and around large banks. And obviously the Wall Street and large banks, they obviously have, they don't want people going towards the whole life insurance route because then they'll stop, they'll start, they'll, they'll reduce the amount they're investing with them. And then they'll become their own source of financing and grow their wealth outside of Wall Street, which a lot of people call it, that they call it infinite banking as like growing wealth outside of Wall Street and like never having to rely on banks. So in a, in a, in a sense, you're, you're competing with banks and Wall Street. And that's obviously, obviously something they don't want, which is, I think, why a lot of people don't know about this concept. Yeah, no, I, I would, uh, I would totally agree with you. And, but the fact is that, as you rightly pointed out, is, you know, banks are very good at persuading you where to put your money. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and when people are in their business, working hard on their business, as I said, they don't have a lot of time to spend on, on, on anything around this. So they tend to go for the easiest, uh, the easiest source of um, liquidity or capital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that may not always be the best one. So, um, so tell me a little bit about um, what is the process for somebody if somebody was listening in here and their business owner, whatever, what's the process that they would go through to, to mm -hmm. set this up? And how would they decide whether this is a good option for them? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. So the first thing is, I would recommend get an understanding of this concept. There's a lot of free material out there, a lot of free books, free podcasts that you can learn about this with about this concept. One one book out there is the um, uh, it's called Becoming Your Own Banker by Nelson Nash. Nelson Nash invented the infinite banking concept. Uh, another book I recommend is the Bank on Yourself Revolution by Pamela Yellen. She invented the Bank on Yourself concept, which is also similar to the infinite banking concept. Um, and if uh, and I'll wait till the end to say this, but if you reach out to us, I'll send you a free copy of either book you'd like for free just by reaching out to us. Um, and uh, understand that concept first, the basics of it, listen to the video, to podcast. And then step number two is uh, give us a call, schedule a, an appointment with us. We can see if it's a good fit. Um, it, some One of the indicators that we know is that it's, it's a savings solution. It's a savings option and it is a long-term strategy. So if it's something that like, somebody's super focused on investing investing, and kind of like, um, if it's not something they want to do, we, we could tell on that call. And then if it is, then we proceed into a financial analysis call. The financial analysis call is us getting to know the client, getting to know their financial situation, where they're at right now, and then where they want to go. What are their objectives in the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? And then we, we use the infinite banking concept to help them address those goals and those objectives. And then after that, we would set up a policy. We would present the policy, Mr. Client, Mrs. Client, this is the policy, or this is a couple policies. Of, and then this is how you fund it. This is how you pay it off. This is how you borrow. And we kind of show it. We, we show the policy, how it works. And then after that, we would submit it to underwriting. It takes about four to six weeks. And then after that, the policy is approved. Then we can start funding it. And then every six months, we do a policy review. So overall, from the time you start learning about the concept to the time you're actually funding the policy, could be about six months, depending on the client, depending on how much knowledge they have about this. But it is a cycle. It's a it's a it's a a training cycle that we have with clients, and then we're all our consultations are free, so we're always available to help clients walk them through this process to look at current policies they have to see if they could um, transition into the infinite banking concept from their current life insurance policies or any other questions they have about this concept or about life insurance. 
Yeah, which is which is great because uh, I mean one of the things that people always like fear a little bit, whether it's uh, to do with finance or any other product or purchase they're making, is being left on their own afterwards, mm -hmm. or having difficult to you know difficulty getting somebody to look after them, or worse still, you know, being charged for every time they ask a question. So mm -hmm. this is obviously a good example of taking away that stressor. Yeah, you're right, John. Exactly. Yeah, we never. You never have to worry about. We don't have billable hours. You don't have to worry about um, uh, paying for our time. We get paid from the financial institutions we work with mm -hmm. at the time that we write the deal. So that means is that uh, once you submit the once we submit the application, you start funding it. We get paid from the financial institutions. We never charge you an extra fee on top of that for our work. Um, it's, it's free consultations and um, we, we do six month reviews. So every six months we're doing a recurring review. We're looking at the policy, looking at the cash flow. If you're a real estate investor, looking at your portfolio, if you're a business owner, looking at the numbers, and then we kind of um, uh, do it on a, recur uh, a recurring process and we're, and we're building out a plan and we're measuring the plan and measuring its steps to see how far we're going, what needs to be changed. Are we on track? You know, another thing too, is we actually partner up with different types of professionals who are within our network. Like, I think you had a lady that was a profit first professional, right? On your podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I work closely with two profit first professionals. And the reason why I mentioned profit first right now is because it blends very nice with infinite banking because it is the allocation of money. You know, profit first talks about allocating your money to five different buckets, your income, profit, expenses, taxes, and owner's pay. Uh, we talk about the same thing too in, in infinite banking. One or maybe a couple, a couple of those buckets can actually be uh, inf an infinite banking content, infinite banking policy. You can have your profits going into infinite banking. You can have owner's pay going into infinite banking. So the reason why I mentioned that to you, John, is that we can work with different professionals and different areas. We have certified public accountants in our network who are proficient in infinite banking and profit first. So it's a lot of cool things you could do. And it kind of reminds me of, uh, actually not reminds me, but I want to tell the audience that we just started a podcast called Thinking Like a Bank. And the reason mm -hmm. why we named the podcast Thinking Like a Bank is to show the audience how like they can mimic some of the things that banks use, such as infinite banking and other, other things like that. So another thing that banks do is they have a lot of professionals who are proficient in different areas. They have yeah. numerous CPAs, tax attorneys, you know, financial planners, advisors, all, you know, with, with you know, the core, um, they have the core objectives, but they all have their own niches and their own things that they, they can help the bank with or the large company with or whatever. It doesn't have to be a bank, but a large company with. And then we can do the same thing too with small business owners. Uh, no, and, and and obviously the personal attention, but the, and the one thing is, uh, some people listening um, may uh, may have the question: Okay, this sounds great, but maybe I'm too old. Maybe it's mm -hmm. too late for me to do this. Yeah, yeah, that's a good concern to to have. Um, it's a valid concern. So I I think that too old. I would say the oldest client I've ever worked with was about seventy three years old, mm. and it worked. It, they got approved by the by the insurance company. Um, so I think over a little bit over, over than that, it's going to get risky. It's still possible. We still, we can still work with annuities. Um, and then annuities still are, there's really no age limit for annuities. Um, and then as far as a whole life insurance, yeah. And then there's also medical underwriting that they have to go through. So they yeah. do have to get approved for it. That could be a problem. However, sometimes what we do is let's say, for example, there's a client who's 70 years old and they want to utilize the bank on your self concept, but they can't get approved for life insurance because of their, their medical situation. They might have, um, they might own a company. They might have a business partner. They might have employees. They might have kids or grandkids that can insure them as long as there's insurable interest where the 70 year old is the owner of the policy. They can manage the money in the policy but somebody else in their family or in the business is the insured, which would allow them to get the policy accepted. So there's a lot of different things we could do. Mm. The financial analysis call, that that's 60 to 90 minutes long and it helps, helps us address all of these things. We ask about their health situation. We ask about if they own businesses. We're, we're kind of predicting that, not predicting, but preparing for if the insurance company rejects the application due to medical reasons, we could circle back and say, hey, you own a business, right? What about your partner that you talked about? You know, different, different things like we could do different things like that and, and, and hopefully help the client in almost any situation. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, I, mean, I mean, I know this is going to be one of those how long is a piece of string questions, but um, uh, some people might ask like, well, how much money am I talking about? What, what is my initial investment? What's my premiums mm -hmm. going to be like? Yeah, yeah. It, it all depends. So usually the policies can be anywhere from, I would say on the lowest end, about $300 per month 
And then really there is no maximum. You could do you yeah. know a million dollars a year in a life insurance policy. There really is no maximum as long as you can get approved for it. Now, where does somebody fall in that spectrum? It's a huge spectrum. I, I would think it's based off of your situation right now. So say, let's say, for example, somebody is single, they're 25 years old. They just got their first full-time job. They have, let's say, for example, they have $2,000 a month and just extra money after their expenses, after everything. From there, they could use maybe a few hundred, like $400, $500 from that to start allocating for the future. And because they're 25 years old, they have such a long way to go until retirement that mm -hmm. they could earn so much more compound interest over time. That's one scenario. Now, another scenario could be, you know, two 40 year olds, a uh, husband and wife, married couple, 40 year old, and they have, they each make $100,000 a year. Then we can start getting more technical now. We can start doing each one of them a policy that's $10,000 a year. And then plus we would have room in the policy to add in bonuses from work or extra income from their businesses or different areas like that. So it all comes down to the analysis, the financial analysis. I think one simple rule is that the more money you put into the policy, the more money you'll have in the later years on a tax favored basis. Mm -hmm. uh, another rule too is or a way to measure it is based off of your annual income. So we see, you know, five to 10% of your annual income going into the policy. It could be more than that. Eventually it ends up being more than that. But one way to start off is five to ten percent of your annual income. Another way could we, could be um, twenty five percent of your net worth. There's so many different metrics, so many different ways to do it. There's really no hard rule that says like if you have X amount of dollars, it should go into this policy. It all depends on how much the client understands the policy and how much they have integrated it into their other areas of their life. Like, like if they're real estate investors, full time employees, business owners, how familiar they are with the concept and how much they they truly want to fund the policy for. And just a last uh, question, uh, you know, compared with other types of investment, I mean, what what are the returns like on this? And mm -hmm. and is it more to do not just the returns on it, but also the flexibility of it that you got to weigh up? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question, John. And I and I, I liked how you it's it's the the comparison part that you asked about. The, the thing is that to, to know with, the, with this concept is that it is not an investment, it's a saving strategy. So you're, mm -hmm. we're really, instead of replacing investments, we're truly replacing savings account and banks. That's what we're truly replacing. Um, and th the reason why it's, it's mostly, and I, I'm emphasizing that the savings plan is that it can be used in connection with other investments. Mm -hmm. So you could fund a whole life policy and then from there, use that to invest in your business or even invest in other businesses as a passive investor where you're just allocating the funds to it and then just getting monthly or quarterly distributions from that. You could do th different things like that. Um, you could, it's never an either or approach. It's not either I do whole life insurance or I do this other investment where I can get 10% mm -hmm. off of. To kind of answer a little bit deeply or, or deeper, you could, you could see in your policy, the returns are not magic. You know, they're not astronomical returns. They sure. are conservative, four to 6% every year. Um, in, in your policy or averaging every year. So from there, from the from, from that policy, you could borrow against it now and then allocate and deploy your funds somewhere that will get you eight to 10%. So this is what you, what's happening right. is that you have your money growing in two different places in the whole life policy, earning four to 6% and outside of that earning hopefully eight to 10%. But obviously with the, with the, now you have the policy holding up the risk now. So if something happens with the policy sure. that's doing eight to 10, with the investment that's doing eight to 10%, you have the policy, to fall back on. So it's a risk mitigation tool, it's a saving strategy, and it can be used alongside investments. Yeah, and you just mentioned also that it, there's, there's tax benefits to it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, there's a lot of tax benefits to it, John. One of the tax benefits is that the growth of the policy grows tax deferred. So as you're allocating funds in, into the policy, you don't have to pay uh, taxes on the interest and dividends you're earning in the policy. And then in most situations, I think about 90% of the situations we help clients with, it's an after-tax solution. It's a, they, they've already paid taxes on the money. Right. They take it out tax-free in the later years, tax-free loans, tax-free withdrawals. And then death, the death benefit, the life insurance part is income tax-free. And um, again, when you take the money out, it's, it's tax-free. Um, you could use it even for business purposes. So what you could, you could do is in your business, you could borrow from the policy, use the policy funds to, for business expenses and to apply for deductions and credits. So you can have this cycle now of tax benefits over and over again within the policy, within your business. In some situations, talk to your CPA about this, but in some situations, you can even write off the interest from the loan that you're, you're paying. So for example, when you borrow from the insurance company, you're borrowing from their funds you pay interest to the insurance company, leveraging your cash value. Now at the end of the year, there's going to be a cost of that capital because you borrow the insurance company's money. Right. If it's for business purposes and talk to your accountant about this, but there are ways to write off the taxes that you borrowed 
And that's crazy because while you're doing that, your whole life policy to begin with hasn't been hindered. It hasn't been, de it hasn't decreased in value. So you have your money compounding and growing and you're leveraging it and you can get the tax benefits by leveraging your money. Yes, fantastic. Well, listen, um, sorry, this has been great. Uh, we love bringing our audience uh, new insights and things that maybe they haven't considered before, particularly for entrepreneurs and small business people and um, who, as we said at the outset, often, mm -hmm. you know, struggle with liquidity and cash flow and are always looking for ways of, of, uh, of accessing capital. So mm -hmm. all of Sari's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, a little bit about myself. I run a company. It's called Financial Asset Protection. Um, you can find us at finassetprotection.com. I'm also pretty involved on LinkedIn, uh, Sari Ibrahim. And uh, we just started a podcast, Thinking Like a Bank. We have about eight episodes live right now. And we have another probably, um, we're doing a weekly episode. So every week, we'll get, if you subscribe to our show, we'll, we'll get to, uh, you'll be able to see a new episode every week. And then, yeah, and, and I'm always looking forward to working with new clients. We work in all 50 states too. So you never have to worry about, mm -hmm. you know, which state you live in. Uh, we do all our calls over Zoom or over, over the phone, whatever you're comfortable with. And I look forward to um, hearing from you guys. Yeah, listen, thank you so much. Um, again, like great information. So thank you, Sari. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.